HTML5 is the powerful successor to earlier versions of HTML, and it can turn ordinary websites into the extraordinary. But it's important to understand the relationship between HTML5 and modern web browsers, and not every browser is created equally. In fact, it's extremely important to test HTML5 functionality while you're creating sites. So in this video, I'll discuss some techniques for determining HTML5 browser support. The first thing you need to understand when you're working with HTML5 in browsers is that you really need to be able to check whatever you're doing against multiple browsers. I mean, all modern browsers are HTML5 compliant, uh, but how compliant they are really varies depending on the browser. So for instance, we have this page here and that div container has been rotated 15 degrees in Internet Explorer. But if I run this in, say, Chrome, we'll see it's not rotated. Let me try it in Safari. Okay, again, not rotated. Now, if I run it in, say, Firefox, it is rotated. Now, the reason for that is because here we have our transform that creates the rotation. And here I've put in a little note that says, this is for Internet Explorer and Firefox. And you just use transform. If you want to work with browsers earlier, Internet Explorer browsers earlier than uh, Internet Explorer 11, you really need to use ms-transform. And that works with browsers that are IE9 and higher. But if you want to work with Chrome and Opera and uh, Safari, you need to use this one, webkit-webkit-transform, and then rotate and we put in our 15 degrees like that and I'll put in a little note here just to let the user know or, or us to know that this is for Chrome, Safari and Opera. Now if I go ahead and save that and then run it again in actually if not Firefox I want to run this in Chrome we can see now that it's been rotated. So you need to ensure that you're capturing all the different browser types and be aware that some things like transform, for instance, do have special commands when you're working with different browsers and HTML5. Now, the other thing you want to be aware of is that you want to look for things like, uh, say, a new HTML5 feature like geolocation, for instance. So let me do something here. I want to check and see if this, is, uh, this browser is going to work with geolocation. So I'll create a script tag and put in a comment. We're checking for geolocation. And here what we want to do is just check, and the way you do that is to say if navigator dot geolocation, then we'll just say alert works like that, else alert doesn't work. Okay, let me just put in a closing brace here. Make sure I've got it formatted properly. Now, if I go ahead and save that and refresh the page, okay, we're going to see that, that Internet Explorer 11 does work with geolocation, and we, we knew that already, but that's a new feature of HTML5, so be aware that there are certain features that are new with HTML5 that you can verify with the browser and sort of act accordingly. For instance, you may want to give a user a message saying, I'm sorry, but your browser doesn't work with geolocation, so you may want to update to, uh, to a more recent browser. So that's one way of doing it. I'll go ahead and remove that. Because the other thing you can do is give the browser options when you're using some sort of HTML5 control. So for instance, I'll go here and I'm going to create a couple of line breaks. And I'll create a video tag. Now video is new to uh, HTML5. And so we'll say video width equals uh, 500, height equals 250. And then controls, and that just tells the browser that we're going to use video controls for this. And then what you can do is, with the video tag, we'll say source, src for source, equals movie 
dot mp4. Now we give it a mime type, so type equals video slash mp4. Now the nice thing about uh, the video tag in HTML5 is that you can give the browser multiple choices. So I'm going to highlight this and copy it. Just control C to copy and press enter and control V and I'm going to paste it in twice because what I want to do here is show you how you can actually give the browser a couple of different choices. Let's pretend that we have an AUG video as well with the same name. So we've saved it in a different format and then we've got one that we'll call this uh, say AVI and we'll change this to uh, WebM. So the three different types of videos that HTML5 understands are MP4, AUG, and WebM. And what this will allow the browser to do is check and determine which format is best for it. So if it finds that it can play MP4 videos, it'll play this one. If it can't, it'll skip to the AUG video, and then it'll skip to the AVI video the same way until it can find a format that it can play. Now, you want to put something else in here for the user, because if the browser is not HTML5 compliant, or it can't play any of these files, then we'll just put a text message in here saying your browser doesn't support HTML5 video. And there you go. So when you save that and the browser loads it up, it's going to try to play one of these three movies in that order. And then if it can't play them, it's going to show the user this uh, this little piece of information. Now I'll save this and refresh it. There's no actual uh, video uh, files here, so we're not actually going to see anything. We just get invalid source. But that's effectively how you do it. So there are a couple of different things that you need to be aware of. Just be aware of what's new with HTML5 and how different browsers will support different tags and different features like video, geolocation, the transform features in CSS. And once you've got that down and, and you test it against, against multiple browsers, you'll have a really compatible website that will be able to work with pretty much anything. And do be aware, finally, that Web pages won't always look exactly the same in different browsers. Everything's a little bit different. Browsers will sometimes display things differently than you might expect. So just take that into account as well. But once you've got it all figured out, you can come up with some really interesting and useful, spectacular HTML5 pages.